Hi, Tefl Dude here, and today I want to show you the top four teaching tools which I use when I'm teaching online every day. The first thing I want to show you is the random student selector. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm always forgetting which student I asked, and I never want to show favoritism. So I simply click, and the names change. I can also right click and choose a different class. In the second part, I want to show you how you can group students without having to do it by order of name all the time. You simply put their names in, choose how many groups you want, and you can show them on screen which groups they belong to. The third thing I want to show you is how to highlight your cursor. Simply by Clicking on this icon, I now have a cursor that is highlighted yellow, which comes in very handy when I'm looking at documents and the students can't see where my arrow is. So this is a really handy tool. And later I'll show you how you can even change the icon. You can even change the color. And finally, in part four, I want to show you how to keep one window on top of another. What I mean by this is, let's say for instance, I've got these uh, questions on the worksheet and I have the answers here. Every time I click to perhaps write the answer down, I have to click back on this folder again. But what I can simply do is with this tool I've got, I'm going to click control space. And now when I click on here, you can see that the image on top doesn't disappear. But if I click control space again, it does disappear. So now I'm going to show you how to download and install and use each one of these items. Now, just before I show you how to do all these things, I want to let you know that I have actually uploaded these tools and put them in one box or one zip file which you can download from my Google Drive. So I've put them all together to save you the problem of going to each website. So if you want to look at the link below and you can download all of them right now before we start. That being said, let's show you how to use the random student selector. So just go to the Google browser, type in no hands, look for no hands e Heidi. You'll be taken here and simply download the no hands zip file as it is. So go to your downloads folder. Now to use no hands, you have to unzip the file. Just drag it into some area of your desktop or wherever you're going to use it from preferably the desktop. Double click and you'll notice there's two files. But in order to create the third file, which is where we're going to write our class names, you have to run this exe file. And you can see a third file was automatically created. And if we look into this file, you'll notice there are two classrooms already created. Ignore all of this jargon, not important. All you're concerned with is putting your students' names here. And here are some names already done for you. Now, all of this, the time, the date, you can change that, but you don't have to. You don't really need it. Just put a label of your classroom so that you know when the class is. If I show you the one I made for me, Here's my one, and as you can see, uh, I've not given many times, I've given it one time. And I've put all the names in, here's my other classes. You simply have to copy this information, Control C, copy. And like you can see, you can make as many classes as you need. Just do that, paste, change this to 
Milan, it doesn't really matter. Change this to 15 and then you click save. And then once you run it again, you'll see there's my Friday 15 class, which I've just made. Now, the great thing about this is that you can leave it on the top. Watch when I click in this box, it disappears. However, if you press Control T, it doesn't disappear. So I can click on it, then I can click here, I can click and read this. You can see it stayed on top of the document. Another thing you can do, once you're back in the classrooms and you're allowing the children to type or press on the button, you can put it in the corner and press Control L and that will lock it to that destination so it can't move. Nothing I can do can move it now. You can see there's a blue border. Control L again unlocks it. But you'll notice I can't right click to change the classes. I can click, but I can't right click until I do Control T and then I can right click and see the classes. So remember, if you do happen to lock it so that it's on top, like now I can change the classes. But once I press Control T and it stayed on top, I can't right click and change the classes. Okay, and so that's the random student selector done. Let's go on to number two, which is going to take about two minutes. You simply copy and paste, highlight the names of your classes, go to this pick a wheel, tools random generator, and you simply, you can save this an image, it's done. I can make it four classrooms if I want. And the way to do this is, in order to get rid of these names, I would have to remove all inputs. They're gone. And then what I need to do now is input some names. There they are, add to the list. And this time I'll have six groups. And you can download, save as image, blah, blah, blah. So that's part two, putting your students into groups. For part three and four, we're going to be using something called a script, but don't worry, you don't have to write anything, but you will have to download auto hotkey. Now auto hotkey, you can find the link below. You can download the current version and install it. Now, if you want to know how to install it, it's, it's just a click and install, it's very easy. I will put a link above to a video I made and part of the video where I explain how to install this, but really you don't need to, just install it. And when it's installed, what you have to do is create a script. Now, as I said before, fortunately for you, both of these scripts for both three and four are already here. So if you go into the tools that I've put in a zip file for you, here is the one that says cursor highlighter. But what you will have to do is make its own file for itself. What do I mean by that? Well, here's the cursor highlighter and here's an empty box. So I'm going to put that into the empty box because when you run it, you will be asked to make another file. So watch as I double click. So I'm asked for this information, just say yes. And you can see another script has been made and I've got my yellow file. Notice at the bottom here, I can turn it off and turn it on. I can also right click and go into settings and I can choose a different color. But for now, I'll leave it at yellow. It's that simple. If you want to know what's going on in the background, all it is is this is a text box file. 
with the extensions AHK and you can open it with notepad and there you can see all the text written in which you don't really need to worry about. So somebody did the work for you and that person is this professor up here. So we got this, he gave it for free for teachers to use and you can download this, but like I say, you don't have to. But if for some reason my link isn't working for my zip file, you can get your own from this address. All the links will be down below. So you've installed hotkey and to turn off this, you can either turn it off here or right click and exit the cursor. So there you go. Now you know how to highlight your cursor so that students can know where you are when you're moving your mouse around. Okay, so let's see number four, how to keep one window on top of another. We've already installed auto hotkey, which we need to use this. And all you have to do is open my zip file and you can download this link and use it as it is. If you want to see what's inside, right click, open it with notepad, and you can see, very simple script. Now, if you want to find out where it is on the website, go to this link, I'll post a link, and you can simply download and install Hotkey and download this script. So there it is in the zip file. So if I go back, you can see there it is, always on top zip. And when you look inside, it's an AHK file. So let's just use it. All I have to do is double click it. And you'll notice down below a H key arrives, always on top H key. What that means is with my teaching document on the top, I do control space. And now I can click here and do what I like and I can still see the document. Control space again, and now I can't. It's really useful for when you're doing listenings. So for instance here, if I do a listening, this is the audio. Feel their soul. Now, obviously if I click here to try and write the answer, the listening disappears. So it's great to use VLC player because you can make it small and control space means I keep it on top. Through their hobbies. Absolutely. One of the things you can see As you could see, I could draw while it's playing. So if ever I have to show the students something on a page, it isn't a problem, the audio is always there. And that's really good for when you're in the classroom, once we get back into the classrooms and we're using those, um, interactive whiteboards. They're really good for this. So I hope you've enjoyed this educational tour of the best four tools and I hope you use them. If you have any problems, just write me a note in the YouTube channel and I'll try and solve your problem for you. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. See you on the next video.